At last you bring me power, me proud beauty. Marry me. Never. What? You refuse me. Marry me or I'll tear you limb from pieces. I'd rather die in fire than the fertilizer. Use a viper. What? I can't control me blood pressure. Bring on the wood and make a fire. Curses. <laughs> Tis I, Julius. Fear not. I'll grab the rat. My hero. Shh. Why? Which? Where? When? I see nothing but wind. <laughs> What's this, a tree? Why, no. No, it's our hero. Marry me, girl, and take a load off your feet. Never, I said. Never. Curses, you still refuse me. My oriental blood is boiling. I thirst for revenge. Where's me matches? Give me a match. Give me a match before I go mad. Try this blowtorch, fixed eye peak. <laughs> My wrath is subdued. Curses! It won't work! My wrath is aroused! I could strangle a grape! Stop! Julius speaking. Curses! Bring me my smelling salts! Don't overheat my Roman blood! Hold still, so I can shoot you! Uh. The gun's got the dropsy. <laughs> oh, I'm ruined. Seize him, men. Stop, or my bowie knife will cut you. Hershel. Oh, good gracious. <laughs> the rats hath eaten the handle off. Tear him to pieces, men, but save the hat. Peaked I peaked. Stop. You forget I am a ball player. Strike one and four yards to go, folks. My little sugar plum, Julius, your heavy date has saved you. My hero. One pull and you are free. Crash into my arms and kiss me, my sweetheart, my angel, my darling, darling. What a man. <laughs> My sweetheart, my angel, darling. And like the wind, they skipped as two fairies, then rode towards the setting sun and the western skies, which they loved. This stuff is terrible, son. Simply terrible. I'm surprised that you're writing such worthless trash. Not so worthless, Dad. That book has sold 50,000 copies up to date. The public eat it up. They love it. It makes no difference. The way you write makes people think that our West is a heck-raising, rip-snorting wilderness. Well, it may have been in the days of 49, but your stuff should be up to date. <laughs> Don't let it get you, Dad. It's all in fun. I'm selling what I'm writing, and I'm making money. My public get a big kick out of it. Well, just the same, it's all wrong. Any real Westerner would laugh at stuff like this. Wait a minute, Dad. Where's that letter, Percy? Here's a real Westerner who doesn't agree with you. Read it. Dear Mr. Morris, I am an admirer of your books. But I think you really do not know the West. If you will come to my mystery ranch, I could show you real he-men who will make the cowboys, sheriffs, and posses in your novels look like sissies. Please accept my invitation as a guest at Mystery Ranch and learn about the real West. Sincerely yours, Mrs. J.H. Henderson. Well, that woman's plumb crazy. Anyone who thinks your stuff is tame must be nuts. What do you think of it, Percy? Do you think she's spoofing me? Of course. If she implies that Western life on a ranch is wilder than in your novels, I should say she'd have to, to go some. 
Well, there might be something in it. You never can tell. I might get material for a new story. Anyway, I'm going to see what it's all about. Do you mean you're going to fall for that woman's letter? Sure, Dad. A writer has to try everything once. Percy's coming with me, aren't you? D delighted, Bob. But perhaps it might be a bit too wild. Take a wire to Mrs. Henderson. Invitation. Stop. Arrive Salinas on number four. Stop. Mr. Jenkins, my secretary, with me. Both anxious to learn about the real West, Bob Morris. Well, this is a break. Now all we'll have to do is advertise at the famous Bob Morris Light Show Ranch. Yeah, we'll have all the dudes in this country flocking here. You said it, Sam, and believe me, I can use the money. The idea of getting this writer fellow down will be a lifesaver to us. But suppose he doesn't like it here. Oh, we'll put it on big for him. He'll like it. What if he finds out we're putting it on for him and gets sore? Then what do we do? Never mind, Mary. I know these writers. Yeah, he's probably some dried up shrimp from the city that's never seen any Western life outside of the Chicago stockyards. <laughs> I guess you're right, Sam. Judging from his books, he certainly must think the West is wild and woolly. Well. Meet my daughter, Mary. How do you do? This is Percival Jenkins, my secretary. How do you do? <laughs> How do you do? And George, my foreman. Howdy. And How Sam. Glad to know you. Well, we might as well be going. All right, Sam, get the bag. Yes. Professor. Oh, all right. I'm to, I'm to ride this horse? Oh, yes. Oh, like that's one. just wonderful. That's just... Say, haven't you got a little short step ladder? <laughs> just put your foot in there. You'll be put all right. Put my foot in there? Wait a minute. Yeah, wait till I help you. Come here. Yeah. I'll give up. No, wait. Wait. My, my goodness. Right, Paul. What kind of a cowboy are you, anyhow? Knocking my hat off, knocking me off the horse, and doing well, everything. get on him yourself. Oh, this is terrible. This is terrible. Uh, I don't know what I'm going to do. Uh, say, wait for me! Wait! Wait! Why, that's Jim Crocker, 
Russell. Carol Russell in the West. I may have got him dead to right this time. All right, boys, put it on. Just a minute. I'll do this myself. Thing to say before we jerk you into kingdom come. <clears throat> boys, all that I've got to say is I hope this is going to be a lesson to me. Reckon you'll get your hope, Jim. Are they really going to hang him? Certainly they will. And he well deserves it, too. But, but they can't do that. It's against the law, you know. Remember, Mr. Morris, you're in the real West now. All right, boys, let her rip. Hey! Just a minute. Come here, Bill. I want to ask you something. Oh, all right. Jim's a little peeved. Why? What's the matter with him? Oh, guess he's a little bashful or something, but he don't think it's fitting for no stranger to butt in on his necktie party. Allows he's entitled to a little privacy. Is this rope good and strong? Hmm, it seems Jim's getting rather exclusive. Schultz Miss Mary, Jim never was a good mixer. But no offense, stranger, better luck next time. <laughs> oh, giddy up. Wrong. The off rain's loose. I'll fix it. No, no, no. I'll fix it myself. You wouldn't know how. We sure put it over at Somebody was mugging with the off rain. It might have started their runaway. I'm very much obliged to you for stopping the team, Mr. Morris. Oh, it was nothing. Anyone could have done that. Oh, no, they couldn't. Why, it takes a very good acrobat to do a Roman ride the way you did. Oh, oh, well. You see, I used to do an awful lot of sitting up exercises at the YMCA. Yeah, come on, boy. Yeah. Yeah. Mr. 
ranch, Mr. Morris. Sure glad you came. Thank you, Mrs. Henderson. Thank you for the hearty welcome, boys. <laughs> Can't you stop them? It wouldn't be right to interfere. It's an old feud. But, but they'll kill each other. I reckon they will, but our West is still a free country, Mr. Morris. Come away, Tex. <laughs> My feet. <laughs> Come on, Mr. Morris. I'll show you to your room. Thank you. <laughs> oh. <laughs> You're going to be all right, old boy. <laughs> Well, well, Mr. Morris, your treat for sore eyes. Who's your tailor? Woolworth. And this is Sears and Roebuck. <laughs> Come on to the corral. I've got a horse tricked out for you. I hope it's gentle. Gentle? He's a cross between a lamb and a rocking chair. <laughs> This'll do the trick all right. He'll get the right feel of the West from the ground up. You said it. <laughs> Here he comes now. Good morning, Howdy. Well, there he is, folks, all dressed up and ready to go. Well, the best horse on the range. He ain't very frisky, but he's smart. Good. I guess this is what made the horse so smart. Why? Why, I can't imagine how that happened. You certainly are a wonderful rider, Mr. Morris. Where'd you learn to ride so well? Mary ground, trying to catch gold rings. <laughs> <laughs> Mrs. Henderson, a couple of cattle thieves got away with a bunch of steers out of South Pasture. Well, we better go after them. Yes, sure. Coming along? They're trying to keep me away. They're coming. Now remember, the boys will separate and we'll try and get the tenderfoot alone. We'll haze him a bit, but no rough stuff. That's orders. I get you. Oh, there they are. You go that way, Mr. Morris. We'll spread out and surround them. 
Good. We sure put it over on him, we didn't we? We sure, sure did. <laughs> <laughs> Look at him go. That writer fellow's going to ruin two of my best cowboys. He sure will, George. I got him! I got him! <laughs> you all need cattle thieves, eh? Stealing a lady's horse! Oh. Stealing oh. lady's cattle! Oh. Uh. Oh. I'll teach you a lesson! Cowards, did you see them running when they saw you all coming? I hope they're cured. You sure can handle your mitts and everything, Mr. Moore. <laughs> oh, I get in some occasional practice with dumbbells, you know. Dumbbells? Yeah, in the YMCA, you know, dumbbells. Why don't you gents take a little ride over our range before dinner? Fine. We need some exercise to work up an appetite. Now, over there, you'll find some mighty good-looking country. Thanks. Go on, Percy. What's the idea of sending them off that way? I want to talk with Sam and Pete. They'll sure want to quit after the rough way that fellow's handling them. Isn't it a wonderful country, Percy? Wonderful. Wonderful. Look! There's a holdup. Don't be silly, Percy. That's another one of Mrs. Henderson's gags. I bet they'll throw the body on the roadside and cover it with a tree. Was I right? <laughs> but, Mr. Morris, perhaps the man is, is actually hurt. Now, don't you see, Percy? That's just what they want us to think. If we react on it, the laugh will be on us. I'm beginning to see, Mr. Morris. <laughs> I'm glad you got it. I'm glad you got it. Let's go back and have dinner. Righto. Maybe it's ignition. Yeah. Quiet place. But not too quiet to suit you, I hope. Well, no. Personally, I like lots more excitement. Do you really mean that? Of course, being your guest, I shouldn't say it. But here we are, a whole hour after dinner, and not a thing has happened. But this morning, wasn't that enough excitement for you? Oh, well. What's a little thing like a lynching or a runaway? Or a feud chasing wild horse thieves in the morning for excitement? 
It doesn't go very far. No, does it? No, I guess not. You're way ahead of me. Listen, Mary, I've... Uh, oh, uh, may I call you Mary? Yes. Why, I've heard that in Red Dog, Arizona, they've had at least three lynchings a day, five saloon battles, four holdups, and a couple of sandstorms, and a big range war going on all at the same time. What is the compensation? You. You know, I could easily get used to the place if... If what? If I had a little encouragement. But I'm afraid that wouldn't be at all exciting. You'd be surprised. Oh, Mary! That's Mother. You'll have to excuse me. We can't do a thing without the proper tools. Well, then we'll have to start walking. There ought to be a ranch house around here someplace. Wait a minute. Don't you think we're taking an awful chance? Oh, we'll bluff it through. Come on, get the stuff. I tell you, we'll have our hands full trying to figure out excitement for him. Just think of it. And I took him to be some dried up shrimp from the east. Well, we started it and we've got to go through with it. He's a smart Alexander, that boy. Half the time I think he's kidding us instead of us putting it over on him. <laughs> Do you think he suspects anything? I don't know. Well, I've got a couple of stunts up my sleeve and if they don't click, I give up. Oh, I wish we'd never started this business of kidding him. He's so nice about it. I hate to go on like this. Not a word about the whole of business we saw before dinner. Nice and peaceful around here. Yes, it's always for dinner. Would you like to look at our family album, Mr. Morris? I'd be glad to. Uh, may I look, too? Yes, yeah, sit over here. Oh, thank you. Now, this is my grandfather. He taught Teddy Roosevelt's Rough Riders how to ride. He did? And this is my great-grandfather. He was the last man to stand at Custer's last stand. That's too bad. While over here is my great-great-grandfather. He taught Buffalo Bill how to shoot buffalo. Poor granddad. He was scalped by the Indians. That's too bad. I suppose this great-grandfather was scalped before he got a chance. <laughs> they took my car and bullion and left me laying by the wayside. Did you recognize them at all? No. They were just a couple of cowboys. Now don't pay attention to the bag. Act as if there was nothing in it. That's a good idea. Come in. Howdy. How are you? Our car stalled down the road a ways. We'd like to get some help to tow it in so we can fix it. Certainly. George, give the men a hand. Give me a bag. Boy, that's heavy. It's as good as done. Come on, boys. Mary, will you help me with dinner? Pardon me, please? Surely. Percy, those are the same fellows we saw pulling that fake hold up a couple of hours ago. Yes, I wonder what they're up to. Well, I overheard Mrs. Anderson mention a while back she had a couple of stunts up her sleeve. Whatever she meant, they're in on it. You think one of us better stay here and watch the gold? No, the less attention we give it, the less suspicious they'll be. I wonder what's in it. Say, this couldn't be heavier if it were filled with gold. Gold? <laughs> no doubt. For the love of my... It is gold. Gold bullion. 
Perhaps it's a fake, too. It doesn't look like a fake. It certainly has the weight. I think it's real. Listen, Percy. Fake or no fake, we'll put one over on them. And a good one so they won't forget for some time to come. Oh, what are you going to do? You stay here. I'll be right back. Fake or no fake, I don't want to take any chances with this bullion. What's it all about? You're going to be the lone wolf. Well, hold up. Take the bag and the girl to the abandoned cabin we passed this morning. You remember where it is? <laughs> Perfectly. And wait for me there. Then I'll come to the cabin and do the grandstand play. Wonderful. On our return, we'll show them what could have happened. And if they can do any better, they'll have to show us. It'll teach them a lesson, as that man said when he was about to be lynched. You've got everything straight? Everything. Now remember, from now on, you're a highwayman. Put it back where it belongs. The back way. And when I get the crowd in here, why, then you come in, see? Now, here. Now, don't forget to disguise your voice. And don't get nervous. Oh, I'm not, not nervous. Here. Come on. you start to labor. Private stock and everything. Come and get it. Yes, sir, right here, boys. Here we are. Well, well here, George. This isn't need a surprise. Uh, well, I think we're going to enjoy this. Yeah, this is... Well, <laughs> well, what's all this going on around here? I was hoping you'd hear me. Just a little treat for hard-working boys. And ladies, of course. to those that wish as well. 
And those that don't can go to Hands up! Don't anyone move. I have the house surrounded by my men. Stand back, or I'll shoot. Time up. Turn around, everybody. Time up, I say. You're going with me, I said. Don't anyone move for the next 10 minutes. Remember, my men are watching you. One move and all is lost. that horse. Wait till I get a hold of that highwayman. Hanging's too good for him. A fine country this is. Nothing but horse thieves and robbers. What you people need is a he-man or two to clean up this bunch of crooks running loose. Wait a minute there, you. Well, why? Get down off that horse. Why? Get down. Well, this, this is an outrage. Sam! Oh, why, it's Mr. Jenkins. Yeah. He and his writer friend framed this holdup as a joke on you and your mother. I overheard them. So that's it, is it? But what's the name? It's, a, it's only sc scrap iron. Uh, yeah. Uh, I guess that was part of their joke. Now listen. One joke deserves another. Let's put one over on that writer fellow. But how'll we do it? I'll tie him up. Oh. And when your friend finds you, you tell him that you were held up by a real bandit. You get it? I got it. Uh, good joke on Mr. Morris. You bet it is. <laughs> then what will we do, Sam? We'll ride to that deserted cabin at the border and hide out. He'll have a tough time finding us there. All right. That'll be a good lesson for Mr. Morris. And in the evening, we'll ride back to the ranch and give them all the big laugh. <laughs> <laughs> I'll get a rope. Come on, Mr. Jenkins. I think I'll stick around and show you a thing or two. Let's go after them. Stay where you are, everybody. I want these two birds. Come on, Miss Mary. They held up the Lone Star Mine messenger this morning, nearly killed him, and took his car. And they got away with nearly $30,000 in gold bullion. Why, my secretary and I saw the whole thing. We thought it was a fake. Well, it was no fake. It's the only real holdup we've had here in 10 years. Where did you hide that bullion? Why, why some bandit held us all up this morning, took mine with him. <laughs> Well, that was Percy, my secretary. We framed it as a gag to get back on all the kidding we've been getting since we came here. 
What is this, a crazy house? <laughs> Your secretary has it now, eh? No, he hasn't got it. That's another gag of ours. Gag, eh? Well, let me tell you, young fella, it's no gag with me. If your secretary hasn't got it, where is it? <laughs> right here, back of the chair. We put some scrap iron in the bag to make sure that the gold bullion wouldn't get lost. <laughs> Still another gag, eh? Why, I, I can't understand. Well, I'll tell you something you will understand. I'm going to hold you until we find that bullion. But, Sheriff, you don't think that I stole it? I don't think anything, but I'm going to put you in jail. But listen, I told you the whole thing was meant for a joke. Well, our jail is no joke. Put the handcuffs on him. Put your hands out there, mister. You gotta wait. Get a couple of boys and we'll go after them. Don't worry, Mrs. Henderson. We'll bring her back. All right, hurry. None of that. Come on, get over there. Don't make a move, that fella. Let's get a little thirsty. Can you hammer that glass of water? for about an hour. Come on. Let's get out of here. There's a couple of horses. All right, come on. Well, now that we're out of that mess, what are we going to do? We'll take no more chances. We're heading straight for the border. Why? Well, where's Mary? A real bandit held us up, took the bag and Miss Mary. Which way did they go? That way. What's the matter? <laughs> what are you laughing at? <laughs> the joke's on you. One of the cowboys came along, explained our plot to Miss Mary, and then they went to the border to hide out and turn the joke on you. This is no joke, Percy. We've been double-crossed. That wasn't scrap iron in the bag. 
There's real bullion. What? But, Mr. Morris, how about me? How about untying these ropes? You know, Sam, they may not be here for a long time. So let's ride back to the ranch. Then when Mr. Morris gets there, he won't know where we are. Listen, Miss Mary, I hate to double-cross you. Well, what do you mean? Well, that bag over there is filled with real gold bullion, and I'm going to take it with me across the border. And I'm going to take your horse so that you'll have to stay here. And by the time they find you, I'll be safe. Hey, wait a minute. You see what I do? <laughs> well, this is a piece of luck. Go to the old border, Captain. But, but you before you go, untie me. Don't stand. Don't let me hear. Why, untie me before you go. Untie me before you go. Where's your men, Sheriff? Come here. Get him up, boys. Bring him in. Here's your bullion. Sam will tell you all about it. Hey, boy, put the irons on him. Get your... Is it still too quiet and peaceful around here for you? No. It turned out to be plenty hectic. But I've got enough material for a new story. Oh, are you going to write me in it? The heroine must fall in love with the hero. Um, are you going to be the hero? 
Oh, untie me, untie me.